So, I'm back here in the server room for a video. And it's not an ASMR video this time. <laughs> um, I thought I'd make a video on how I prepare servers for, for resale. And this would also apply just if you're preparing to get rid of a server. So, the first thing I do is I will blow out the dust. Which, I haven't done to this one yet, but I'm not going to sell this one right away. So, I'm skipping a step. I also don't normally test these in my rack, but I'm getting ready for a project. And, anyways, back on topic. I'll kind of get ready, get them prepared, configure them however I want. If the configs can change, take parts out, put parts in. Simple things like that. And... I know there's ways to do updates with like the iDRAC or the web interface, but I'm lazy. So what I like to do is, this is a optical drive to two and a half inch hard drive adapter. It's technically made for a Lenovo laptop, uh, particularly the W540, but I use it for testing, testing servers. And one handy little bit that these servers have that I feel probably gets more overlooked than it should. Let's see if I can do this with the tripod on my face. <laughs> is the optical drive bay. So with the optical drive bay in these, it's not going to be high performance, but you have the option of running a SATA device. And the R730 is kind of an exception because, at least from what I'm used to working with, because this does have a full SATA connector. But I just use my little, oops, use my little drive adapter tray. It lets me put the SSD just kind of nicely in there. And it's going to try to peep around the tripod here. There we go. So, yeah, I will install a drive with Windows on it, Windows 10 in this case, so I can do firmware and BIOS and updates like that. And I'm gonna plug this all in and show the next step. All right, so now I got the server hooked up. And this is basically the only reason I need the rack consoles. There's really no other good reason to use them if you have iDRAC Enterprise licensing. And what I will do is I will boot the server into BIOS. Which should take a little bit. Oh well, system setup if you want to be, you know, particular. And since this drive, or this server, I mean lost its drives, it's the RAID controller is going to be upset, but I don't really care about that because I'm just going to clear out the RAID controller settings as well. May take a second. <laughs> hmm. All right, so I'm in BIOS now, and I'm going to clear the defaults. And I'm going to go to the rate controller, configuration management, clear config. Also, check the battery status. So, looks like the battery needs to charge. 
Yep. And the setting that will take the longest is iDRAC. So usually what I will do is I will clear the system logs because I don't care about those. Oops. And then I will uh, clear the iDRAC settings back to defaults. And this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. Okay, well, IDRAC has been set to defaults now. So next step will be is booting the Windows. And like I said, this is mostly just because I'm lazy. And it just gives me the ability to do the various firmware and IDRAC and BIOS updates and all that. And I will probably s just uh, skip the cut to the next step, since this will take a while to get going. Alright, well, it's booted into Windows now, and these are the three things I usually do. So it'll be the BIOS update, the Diagnostics update, and the iDRAC update. And those are really the things that are the most important. I suppose, you know, you could do other things like RAID controller and network adapter updates, but usually that stuff's fine. Oops. I do find that having the latest iDRAC, BIOS, and diagnostics is beneficial. Especially in some of these older machines where if you do try to run the diagnostics, they don't work correctly. It'll just give you an error screen. Unfortunately, these steps take a while as well. Basically everything takes a while when you're trying to get a server ready, whether it be for resale or just to get rid of it. Technically if you're getting rid of the server, like recycling it, you don't really have to update the firmware, but um, yeah, this video is more about how I prepare a server for sale than anything else. Unfortunately, as much as I'd like to do more than one at once, you can't, which is kind of sad. Also, I find it kind of funny that um, this is 13th gen, this is R730, and we got a Core 2 Duo desktop, a Core 2 Duo laptop, and then that could be a 12th or 13th gen Dell server. Um, yeah, I believe, I believe, the I, I guess I haven't seen a 13th gen tow tower style of server yet, but um, it's going to be at least something like an R320, R420. That laptop, hmm, I'm going to guess it's a D620. The desktop, there's too many options there, that could either be a 7, or well, no, it's black, so it's not going to be a GX620. So there's 745, 755, 760, or 780. <laughs> hmm. But, anywho, yeah, I'm going to run these updates and then go on from there. Well, it took almost 8 minutes, but iDRAC is done, which is nice. That's always the hardest one, in my opinion. I had a lot of times where it fails, and I don't know why. Recovering from a failed iDRAC update is really annoying too. So this is the diagnostics update. I've started doing this update on all the servers I work on because I've run into several R720s where when you launch the hardware diagnostics it just goes to a red cursor. So rather than having to worry about that I just 
go into it right off the bat. This one doesn't take quite as long as Idrak, but it does take time. So, I'll cut back in once uh, this is done. Well, diagnostics are updated now. And this will be the last update I can do that doesn't require updates. Or not updates, I'm <laughs> sorry. Rebooting! Anywho. So, final step will be BIOS. And this one will require a reboot. And a lot of times when I get these systems from people, they're pretty outdated on what versions they're running, which is interesting. Not to say I frequently check the hardware I'm running for updates when it comes to firmware and stuff, but I just kind of figure that data centers would have more of a budget and time to stay on top of those things. Of course it might not matter either, but I believe this BIOS update mentions that it expands CPU support, which would be handy if you're upgrading. This particular server is running a pretty low-end config though, considering what it's capable of taking. Let's see what this will show. It's uh, 48 gigs of DDR4, and it's 6 uh, 8 gig sticks, and a pair of E5, 2643, V3, Xeons at 3.4 gigahertz. I believe those are just quad core, six core. We're gonna ignore that for a second. An open task manager, there we go. Uh, yeah, hyper threaded six core CPUs. So, yeah, time for a little BIOS update. Also, this message is kind of funny because uh, this is more of a message you see in the server operating systems. Usually when you're doing BIOS updates on like laptops and stuff, it doesn't warn you that you're about to be signed out. But, yeah, this isn't really the right way to do updates on servers. It's just the way that's convenient for me. So, hopefully, this will have an updated BIOS once it reboots. Also, while I'm at it, I need to put iDRAC on DHCP so I can make sure it works. But, yeah, so that's what I do to prepare servers for resale. It's not really much. Um, the final thing, which I guess I'll show, is diagnostics. But I'm going to let this do its BIOS update. That's going to take a while. And then I'll be back. Alright, well the server's rebooted. And the BIOS update was successful. So, now the only thing left to do is run the diagnostics. Which will require a reboot. Also on a different machine, I need to make sure iDRAC works since I haven't uh, worked with this machine yet. And to get the diagnostics, it'll be F10 for the lifecycle controller. Once it initializes. There we go. And also while we're waiting for this to boot, I guess, it's worth mentioning that when I'm in Windows, I will usually test the ports. So the front and back USB ports, the front and back VGA, 
the networking ports and stuff like that. Generally speaking, you shouldn't find bad ports on a server unless the server's been subjected to a power surge or the port has physically been damaged. Luckily, in most cases, it's pretty unlikely. And I would say it's safe to guess in most large data centers. They're not plugging anything in other than power and, and networking. All right, well, yeah. So then once you're in the uh, lifecycle controller, and just select hardware diagnostics and run. It'll tell you it takes a while, it'll tell it yes, and then it'll start eventually. In theory. <laughs> It does take a while. It'll act like, oh, that's different. Must be, well, yeah, I guess you can't interact with me. Oh, there's the mouse is frozen up. It'll act like it's frozen up, but there we are. Yeah, it just takes a while to initialize, and I don't know why, but uh, what are we complaining about? I'm not sure, oh, network one. So this is a little bit different than the R720s. It's checking for network connectivity. One downfall with the Dell Diagnostics is if it fails one of the tests. Well, wait a second. Those aren't hooked up. <laughs> That's an interesting problem. That's something I'll have to check off camera, but. Um, anyways, once once it fails a test, it, it doesn't like to run thorough tests then after that. So, in my case, I'm going to have some issues because there's no... Oh, actually, no, I left the hard dri the boot, boot drive in, so... It's not going to error on the hard drive like it normally would, but, uh, yeah. If it throws an error, I won't do the full, like, memory tests and stuff. But, yeah, it's nice to be able to at least run the diagnostics and make sure there's nothing major going on. So... Hopefully that was interesting and thanks for watching.